Say, kids, what time is it? It's kind of like watching TV, but, you know, in your car. 104.7 The Cave, Mike uh, the Intern, Jay Stevens in the studio. Go. Oh, it's it is to... Dark Side of the Stream. You know, they can 92. put a man on the moon and God, <laughs> there's always something wrong with our stream. You know what's funny is if we were on Apollo 13, we would have died all day long. Yeah. I'm Mike the Intern. This is Jay Stevens, Dark Side of the Stream, episode 92. As I mentioned, this week was Jay's pick. <laughs> Randy Rhodes, Reflections of a Guitar Something more icon. lighthearted than uh, Rape, Death, and Murder yeah, that we've been yeah, doing yeah. for the past or two years. The, the, the pick I've got in my back pocket oh, for the next one we're no, going to watch. Oh, uh, no. But before we get to that, let's discuss this documentary, um, which you actually have to purchase if you want to watch it. It was four spring bucks, a few bucks. Yeah, spring on Amazon bucks. Prime. Worth, in my Boy, opinion... Scott Meyer calling me uh, Hang up on that, dude. Um, anyway, uh, tell that guy we're busy. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, great documentary. If you are a guitar player, if you're into Ozzy, if you're into Quiet Riot, if you're into just guys that shred, rock and roll history, rock and roll even, history, yeah. you want to meet a really awesome dude in Randy Rhodes, you get to do that. Um, and let's just get into it. Uh, I thought that I thought it was a moment of silence. No, well, <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, it's tragic what happened to Randy. Um, and and just it it really is such a because what could have been with him, what he could have brought, um, is just a tragic thing. We'll get into that in a little bit. But first, um, I thought it was really well done in the sense that uh, uh who was it? Tracy Guns that uh did, narrated uh, narrated. Yeah. he did a really good job on this. Um, and most of the focus was on the early days of Randy Rhodes and Quiet Riot. Some great pictures. And, and the stuff, Aussie videos. stuff was like the last 20, yeah, 30 barely, minutes. Just of, I mean, it was really quick, um, probably because some of the stuff they had to use was like found footage, because I'm guarantee you Aussie's camp was like either you're going to pay or you can't use this. Stuff, That's terrible. Um, which That's sucks. Terrible. And it's not really a good look on Aussie and Sharon, which they, I mean, Aussie is Aussie, but Sharon never has had a good look um, as far as you know, if he was really, I, they should be so thankful yeah. for Randy because if it hadn't have been for Randy Rhodes, Ozzy's solo career would have been dead. Probably not as good because he, no, he not got as a good. good fine. He got it would have been garbage, there, right? Because he had no. I mean, that story that a guy, the guitar tech who was trying to help Ozzy find a guitar oh, player, no, bass player, yeah, the bass player, player, yeah, yeah, Dennis Trum, yeah, Dennis Dennis Slaughter. Slaughter from yeah. Slaughter comes in. He's Joe like, around, I want to find these guitar players and hands them a list, and he's like, what? what the hell is this? Like yeah. he had no, he had no clue, no clue. And if Dan, Dana hadn't said, this is the guy, this would have never happened because at that point, Randy goes to London, writes all of these songs with Ozzy. Yeah. And puts a band together and blizzard of Oz is born, which is the name of that band. Then right before they put it out, they flip it Changed to an Ozzy name, solo record. And then, it. but those first two records were written at the same time. They could have, it could have been a double album actually, but then they recorded one. They recorded the next one very quickly. Randy passes away in the plane crash. Ozzy's solo career just gets launched, and he's bigger and better than than ever. Again, that all comes from Randy Rhodes. And if I don't care who you are, I love Ozzy. I love Sabbath. You know all that stuff. But a fact is fact, and the fact is. Randy Rhodes doesn't exist. Ozzy's solo career doesn't exist. I, I don't know what would have happened. It's hearsay, but that launching pad of Blizzard of Oz doesn't exist. No Ozzy, as we know it in the solo. Okay. This doesn't exist. Just uh, the great footage, too, of like him playing with Quiet Riot like in a park for like 10 people, yeah. like early gigs. Like it you also, watch the whole you watch the whole metamorphosis. Man. The grind yeah. that these guys put in. And again, you're talking about arguably one of the greatest guitar players at the time in a LA band trying to get signed, doing everything they can. And we'll get into that next dark side of the stream on 104.7 The Cave. 104.7 The Cave, Mike the intern, Jay Stevens back in the studio, dark side of the stream. It was Jay's pick this week, Randy Rhodes, reflections of a guitar icon. Now, Jay picked it, and he, I think, watched it first, and he came in. He's like, bro, oh, man, oh, man, yeah, man. You know, you know how I get. Little you bit know of controversy. I I, now, I, wanna, controversy, I, I, yeah. I, wanna bring, I wanted I wanted to bring this up because I want to kind of put you on blast because uh, uh, Jay is referring to the, I guess, uh, competition between Edward Van Halen and Randy Rhodes. Yeah, well, they, because it was Eddie, Eddie commented on They Randy were Rhodes. essentially kind of going at the same time. Maybe Eddie had a year or two on him. Yeah, he had a little lead And on Eddie's him. claim is that Randy stole all of his stuff. Well, that could be or that couldn't be. I don't care. But there is a really good point I want to get across right now is that, yes, Eddie Van Halen has incredible talent. 
Randy Rhodes, also incredible talent. Even when he was on the road with Ozzy, Ozzy's like, he'd wake up every day and I'd hear him practicing every single day. You probably say the same thing about Eddie Van Halen, but the difference between the two individuals is this. Eddie Van Halen, extremely talented guy, and he knew it. And he let everybody know yeah, yeah, yeah. he you was gotta, the best. You got to do that. You, you do that. never heard Randy Rhodes say that ever. No, he went out and proved it with his guitar and his playing. But even according to Ozzy, even when they were on the road, he would teach every single guitar player that opened for that band. He would take the time and say, this is how I did it. And this is how you can do it. How many people raise your hand can say that about Eddie Van Halen? Yeah, Not trashing the guy, but I'm just saying, this is my point. If you are listening to this and you're trying to be a, a talented whatever it is, there's a difference between someone who shows it with what they do and someone who tells you. Yeah. And Eddie had a huge ego. He was a cool guy at the end of his life. He was. But at this point in time, not the best look on Eddie Van Halen because look at the action. Well, and something else that was that was slid in there was that they would see – David Lee Roth and uh, Eddie Eddie to, Van to Halen shows. at their shows yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. would never see Randy Rhodes going to Van Halen shows to watch. Now, the other thing movie. that I wanted to bring up now was something that Jay didn't mention. And this is because it's a bad look on one of his favorite bands. Oh, no. At one point, uh, Quiet Riot was essentially founded by Randy and one of his best friends who he taught how to play bass, who ended up being uh, kind of an alcoholic. They ended up kicking him out of the yeah, band yeah, because yeah. he... Tried to, not shoot, tried to shoot like, Randy. Yeah, he just tried to shoot Randy when they're like, look, dude, you need to stop drinking, start learning your parts. He pulls out a gun, starts shooting it, and then Randy attacks him, and then that's that. When they went to go look for another band, uh, guitar or bass player who ended up would being Rudy Sarzo, which was a you know great, great find for them. Um, they auditioned a young Nikki Six. Yeah. Who at the time could not play bass. Couldn't play bass. Couldn't tune his bass. Yeah. Couldn't even put strings on hey. his bass. And then when they were like, "All right, it's an E," he's like, "What's he had that?" The look. He had the look. <laughs> he had the look. That's all. I he's halfway it. there. I paused. He's halfway it there. So that I could look at myself. I walked up to the bathroom and I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, "You're right." Motley Crue is trash, and they've been trash since the beginning. And thank you, documentary, for proving hey, my point once again. Hey, but speaking of Rudy Sarzo, the the crazy full circle thing of this is that now. The only member in Quiet Riot that was really uh, in Quiet Riot in the heyday is Rudy Sarzo's back in Quiet Riot. Yeah. And they're playing this weekend. They Black are Oak, playing Black, Black Oak, Oak this weekend. This weekend. Uh, uh, Skid Row, who's got a new record coming yeah. out this fall. It's actually really good. Warren, new it's going to be good. a great, great yeah, show Warren, Skid Row. this weekend. Ah, man. Uh, I wish I could go. Really, really get down to Black Oak and see these guys because they're super talented and they're still doing their thing. Quiet Riot's still doing their thing. <laughs> we'll no, get, no original members at no, all, well, but they have. Uh, at least one member of the what do they call that? The legacy. What do they call it when the it's legacy, like the prime band, time? The prime time, the like heyday, the heyday yeah, lineup or whatever. All right, we'll go back lineup. to uh, Randy's days in Quiet Right next. Dark Side of the Stream on one hundred four point seven. The Cave. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio. Dark Side of the Stream, episode ninety two. Randy Rhodes, reflections of a guitar icon. Now, um, I've mentioned this before. Anytime I bring up Randy, is that he was a teacher first. Um, his Parents were musicians. His mom founded a music school in California, which I believe is still standing for all lack of a term. And he had like upwards of 50 students. And Quite that was a little kid shows up with his little teeny practice amp. No, no Marshall, no nothing. This, just, just a cool, just a, just a player, Kill just cat, a musician, yep. just like one of us just happened to work his ass off on it and become one of the best. And, arguably uh one of the most inventive in my opinion is if you listen to some of his stuff and what the short period that he was doing things um it's the classical it's influence thing was what uh, yeah which really was downplayed in the documentary was downplayed they um, didn't say like he was well, a classical guitar player that early, went to rock early on that one of the guys was like you know they always say uh, you know randy rhodes classical no man he was a rock guitar yeah. player well and he yeah, added yeah, classical in later kind of I mean, when he was in London trying to make a record with Ozzy, he was still getting classical guitar lessons. Yeah, yeah. Was, a guy at that level then. writes the solo for Crazy Train, then goes and gets takes, a lesson from someone classical else. Classical guitar lessons. That's yeah. that's a that's that's an awesome dude. That's back uh, to one thing. I met, learner. I met, learner. I forgot to mention where when oh, I was man. trying to not dog Eddie Van Halen in this, and, and we were talking about that. It wasn't competition, but this goes to show you the type of guy that Randy Rhodes was. Even when he knew he was competing as, as a member of Quiet Riot to get signed, Eddie Van Halen gets signed with his band, 
right? First, right? he's got to feel some sort of jealousy. I mean, it's got to be in there yeah. somewhere. There was a little bit, and, and but then he's got students coming in with uh, Van Halen tapes and saying, "I want to play this." And you know what he did? He'd go home and he learn it. Learn so he could it, teach him, and he would teach him the Van Halen. He put course. that stuff aside. Yeah, he wouldn't dog aside. him. He wouldn't say, "I'm not teaching you this crap." Yep. He would do it. You want to learn that? I'll show you how to play. Let me let me figure it out. Another yeah. reason Randy Rhodes is an awesome dude. And also, uh, the the funny thing I thought was that his guitar tech. Would put a picture of Eddie Van Halen on, on the wah pedal. pedal. <laughs> so when Randy came out, he'd have to stomp, and he, he would just stomp, stomp that the pedal. Out of so he, there was a little bit of hatred in there, a little egotism. Definitely, um, it, it's a it's a crazy. You you feel bad for some of the guys, especially Kevin Dubro um, from Quiet Riot, who eventually would get. Um, some fame uh, later yeah, on. Yeah, he did a great job um, too. You he know? was a great front man. Uh, I you you listen to some of those early recordings when they were trying to get signed and them trying to make a disco Terrible song. Terrible songs, right? Like yeah, that, that quite right. Randy way. Rhodes years is not that good music, the, really at the, all. The 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 lesson there is, and the drummer had said it himself. He's like, we should have just done what we did and did and just kept doing what we did until eventually it would come back ar- come back around to what they were doing, but they just kept chasing what the record execs would say. Bottom line line is this don't chase that stuff do what you do well do it good and just keep doing it there you go that's we're, we're perfect examples yeah. of that we're still working and that's what we, we've been doing what we've always i done. show up and i'm just me <laughs> i'm not trying to be anything other than myself yeah. so um randy's story comes to a tragic end obviously in the plane crash uh you can look into that um the theories about how that happened why that Terrible, happened but man. It's ultimately a horrific end to the story for a guy who who left so much in such a small time. What he could have done just breaks your heart. Um, he, you know, he didn't do drugs. He, he drank a little bit, but not really. Um, had a girl. He's just a he's just a player, and he loved to play, and that's all. That's all. And he's a yep. great great guy. I mean, uh, no, not one person in that entire documentary has had, had anything bad to say about no, him. No, even Eddie Van Halen, who said, "Yeah, he was great. He copied all my stuff." Biting the to- <laughs> biting his tongue, trying to say something good about him, and he still barely can. It's a, it's just, an underhanded compliment. Yeah, no, but still, yeah. not one person, no. not one per. Actually, the drummer who was kind of butthurt the fact that he didn't call him to tell him that he was going on the road with Ozzy. But in the end, I don't think that Randy thought that that was going to be a long-term thing. I thought, I I really think that he was in it for a little bit. He may have continued on, but he may have just come back to Quiet Ride or may have started something new. Well, and he also, you might have felt bad. Like, he seemed like a guy that probably likes to avoid confrontation. Yeah, absolutely. So he probably, Mm. the, the drummer was probably a little bit, more aggressive, you know, and as a person, so he probably just didn't want to deal with that. Yeah. He's just like, I'm just gonna do my thing, do my and, thing and 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 it know? wasn't like he was gone that long. I mean, he, he yeah. went and recorded a record, and, and, and year, nobody knew tour. it was going to be big. No, nobody. You know, knew. Ozzy was this drunk. He wasn't was even in. A, he wasn't drunk, even in the Sabbath. Was in, yeah, he was like, in, you know, the guy Black Sabbath. Yeah, like, I don't like Black Sabbath. Yeah, yeah, he didn't like Black Sabbath music. He was like, so he probably just thought, yeah, I'll go, I'll make a little bit of money, I'll play on this record, and come back. Incredible guy, incredible musician, and we could all learn a lot from Randy Rhodes. We'll talk about our uh, reviews and what we're watching next. Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7 The K. 104.7 The K, Mike the Intern, Jay Stevens back in the studio. Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7 The K. So how many uh, classical guitars would you give this documentary of Randy Rhodes? It was yeah. good, nice, easy watch. Solid. Didn't didn't, uh, didn't do anything crazy. Sh- uh, shed a little bit of light on maybe some things I didn't know, but just I like the old archival footage. You know, it's it's proof that they're that hey, everybody starts out playing for ten people. And, and, and even and, guys and like Randy Rhodes could go without being signed for years yeah. and years and years and years and years. And I agree, I'm, I'm totally a four. Um, I, I thought the reason that I like this documentary so much was because, like I said, they focused on the earlier stuff, like Quiet Ride stuff that we may not have known about. Yeah, yeah. Because everyone knows the Ozzy stories, everyone knows Blizzard of Oz stuff and what happened, the plane crash, all that stuff. It's been retold and told and told and told and told. So you literally just throwing it into the last 20 minutes of the documentary, I think was good because you got to really hear from some of the guys that knew him when he was young, some of the guys he fought on the front lines with and, uh, very cool guy. Like I said, watch this documentary. It's definitely worth the four dollars, and uh, you might learn something about how to be a better person or even a better musician. Yep. Practice, 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 practice. practice. practice for you sure. wake up, you play, you go to sleep. You right before you go to sleep, you play. And that's just the guys that I know in my life that are 
just unbelievable. That's the way to do it, kids. Well, you do that, and that way, when you get to be fifty-two, you don't have to practice at all. You put in all that time long ago. So you, sh- you, you show, show up. up now. You just show up and play. You show Easy. up, do your thing, Easy. take your shirt off, yep, and uh, hit the lights. Easy, hit the lights. Uh, next week what is we my watching? pick for Dark Side of the Stream. We're going to watch a documentary called Our Father on Netflix Ooh, about right. the doctor who uh, basically uh, inseminated. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women, and there's a bunch of kids Whoa. out there. You, and, yeah, it's crazy story. Whoa. We're trying not to give Jay any ideas here, but yeah, I have a feeling yeah. uh, we You're might have me a, subscribe a little to bunch of, me. bunch of. Yeah, <laughs> you start and get them all these random. Next letters. week's show. Is I, was brought, short on ca- I was short on cash in ne- the nineties. Next week's show brought to you by Ancestry.com. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out and see how many uh, little Jays are out there running. Oh no! Uh, around uh, as always, you can stream us on Facebook, YouTube every Thursday at nine a.m. or as a podcast on our one hundred four point seven The Cave app. I'm Mike the Intern. This is Jay Stevens reminding you. We watch movies, movies, so you don't have have to. to. It's Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7 The Cave.